Now, uh, we completed the uh, flame test lab in class today, and hopefully you've watched the videos on Edmodo that explain the uh, different colors and that you verified your colors that you observed were the appropriate colors. Now we are going to analyze those results. So when you heat a substance in a flame, um, those uh, electrons that are heated will increase in energy and go to an excited energy state. <clears throat> but that is not the desired um, condition that an electron wants to be in. Uh, and so it will return back to the ground state and in doing so will release light in the form of a photon. So the difference between the two between the ground and the excited state is the change in energy. Okay, so the change in energy is the difference between the two levels, okay? And we have a wavelength that we have determined by looking at the color of the light, or in this case, the flame test. H, you don't really need to know much about it other than the fact that it's a constant, and his name is Planck, Planck's constant. And then C is the speed of light. So there was a derivative, uh, this was derived at some point, and I do not, I'm not concerned about you knowing exactly, um, you know, where it all came from. I am most interested in you knowing that the change in energy and the wavelength and where those came from. Now you filled in your data table and you listed various colors of light like these seen here. Now there are regions for each light color. There's a little wavelength region. So what we do is we will use a representative wavelength. Okay. So the one that I did in our um, class demo is I did sodium chloride, okay, and that's salt. And when I did sodium chloride, then we saw a specific light color. Now, the sodium had an intense yellow color when we um, actually we're observing it in class, and so it, it's right here, the yellow color. And so the representative wavelength that we will use is 580. So you should, on your table, have sodium metal, or you could have written the word out, it doesn't matter, and the color of the flame, yellow. So uh, the metal is sodium. The color of the flame is yellow. The um, wavelength, and when I say wavelength, I mean the representative wavelength in nanometers, is 580. But we have to convert to meters um, because in the equation here from the first page, um, the wavelength is in uh, meters, okay? So let's calculate, or let me show you how to calculate um, or convert nanometers to meters. So nanometers are smaller, and so nanometers are equal to 1 times 10 to the negative 9 meters. All right, so what you're going to have to do is you're going to take your number in nanometers and you're going to um, multiply it by 1 times 10 to the negative ninth. And so the way that you do that in a conversion table, and maybe you did this in math before, and I'll just show you, is you have your x nanometers, and then we know that 1 
nanometer is equal to 10, er, excuse me, 1 times 10 to the negative 9 meters. And so whatever you have here for your x, whatever number it is, in this case it will be 580, um, then you will take that number and multiply it by 1 times 10 to the 9th. And then when you do that, that will give you your um, wavelength in meters. Okay? And I'm not going to do every one of these for you, so I'm just showing you how to do it. Um, and then it says, notice that you need to show at least one sample calculation. But after that, what you're going to do is calculate delta E. So if you look back at the formula on the first page right here, delta E, which is the change in energy, and I remember we drew this arrow to show change of energy, is equal to HC, H is Planck's constant, C is the speed of light, divided by the wavelength of light in meters. So you've already converted to meters, and now it's just a matter of um, figuring out the change in energy. So we want to see the change in energy. So then what you're going to do is you are going to, in order to determine change of energy, you're going to take your H, given, C, given, and divide it by your wavelength in meters. And remember that you started with wavelength in nanometers and then you converted it to wavelength in meters um, by using 1 times 10 to the negative 9. And um, also remember that the wavelength in nanometers that you used is the representative wavelength from the um, table on the second page. Or is it the third? Anyway. So, use the representative wavelength. And then you can compare the change in energy and, you know, compare the wavelengths and, and really see which color of light required the greatest change in energy. And um, that will be it.